Today we're going to talk about my interface system and how I've changed it up now to something which is more efficient in some ways. I've got the only abilities that I tend to use on a day-to-day -day basis or at the bosses that I go to more frequently. I've got all of those abilities ready to use and key binded. As you can see, I don't have any range abilities here except for escape because I don't use range currently in the game. If I did, then I've got plenty of space to put in some range abilities and key bind those if needed. Uh, there's a few things that I'm going to talk about in this video, uh, the use of multiple action bars, how to set those up, how you can buy them uh, to buy extra bars if needed. At the moment I'm using five different action bars to create this interface. Um, I'll also talk about you know, the reason why certain abilities are in places, why I've keybinded abilities in certain ways. I've still got a lot to learn about you know, uh, effective ways of keybinding. But at the end of the day, this is very subjective. Everybody has their interface differently, depending on how they like to keybind things. So I will be talking and touching on keybinding because I do think that's important. Uh, more specifically, of course, the main action bar. You want to start, you know, slow. You don't want to get straight into keybinding loads of different things. You want to start off slow, and I'll talk you through, you know, the main action bar and what keybinds have got there and why, in terms of, you know, the direction of use via the keyboard. And then I'll also go through a few keybinds which I've uh, utilized with my mouse that I've got and I'm using the shift plus any number or um, character on my keyboard in order to effectively do that. And that allows you at the end of the day to exploit a lot more keybinds and make it easy for you. But you do need a good mouse to do that or a mouse that has buttons on it. The mouse that I actually have uh, to help me with this setup that I've got going on is a Logitech gaming software mouse, uh, which you can see now. And this mouse is absolutely awesome. I would highly recommend it. It's a great starter mouse as well. Uh, if you're just getting into how to keybind and using different mouse buttons, you know, it's not sort of, it's not too much to handle. I know there's like Razer mouses out there uh, that have like a million buttons around here and you can have like 10 or different buttons on here. But if you use the shift method, which I'll talk you through on this video, then you can pretty much have an unlimited supply of keybinds. If you use like shift and alt, on these two buttons here, then you can have a decent amount of keybinds by just pressing the mouse button and then uh, pressing the corresponding number on your keyboard. And it works very well for me at the moment. And again, I'm just getting used to it. Like I said, on the last video, I went and did Virago and Sunshine instead of Caded and died. But you know, it, it takes quite a bit of adjustment to get used to. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time to adjust to it, but once you do and you invest that time, it's totally worth it. I remember back in the day, I would be determined just to click my thresholds all of the time. And God, it changed my gameplay when I started to really invest time into just just using the threshold keybinds and now do it second nature because you just do it out of habit. These gobies, I might have not picked the great spot. I don't know why, but they just started huddling around me like it's some sort of like American football game. Anyway. Uh, we will go away from there for a second. So let's have a look at the action bars to start off with. If you just go into the settings menu and then you go to game settings, you go to action bar settings and as you can see, you can use the settings window to enable additional action bars on your screen. So you can have a secondary action bar, a tertiary action bar and so on. Um, I've actually managed to unlock, you know, um, the this is the maximum amount of action bars that you can actually have on your screen at any one point. So you can only have one, two, you can only have five action bars on your screen at any one point. But you can, of course, unlock more action bars if you wish to do so. You can also choose to buy additional action bars if you just right click here and press buy action bar. So you can buy the rune coins there. And if you click buy, it'll go to another screen and you can then, um, you know, buy with either bonds or IRL money. To get a package, um, I mean, I don't know whether the price changes depending on how many action bars you've bought. It potentially doesn't, but I've got, for now, it says for me, it's 100. So for me, it's 195 rune coins. And that costs about £3.50 um, if you buy like a pack of 200 rune coins. So it costs £3.50 to buy a pack of 200 rune coins. and Or, of course, you can go and buy a bond and then transfer that bond into rune coins. You need so many of those to obviously add up to 200. Uh, overall, it can cost quite a lot of in-game money to unlock, you know, the max amount of action bars on offer. But that's something you need to look into and uh, it's your personal opinion on what approach you want to take. And I just want to say a big thank you to Julius and Mate of Mine for the initial layout of this interface as a basis to work from. So I'll leave uh, the link to his channel in the description below. Alright, I'm now going to fast forward the footage 
in terms of me actually setting up this interface. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. All right, so hopefully you've got the gist of how to create this setup from scratch in terms of starting off on the RS3 default um, interface. A couple of things that uh, I did go through pretty quickly on that. Um, in order to actually show this summoning, this familiar interface, you wanna right click the little summoning familiar options here on your main action bar. You right click it and you click follower details. And by doing so, it actually pops up this familiar interface for you. And if you press this uh, little blue button here, you can switch the display mode of your familiar window from the way it looks to the actual inventory of a Bob. So this is very useful for when you have a Bob familiar out, such as a pack yak where you can actually see your items in there and it's very useful for PVM because you know like how much food resource you have left. With regards to the gameplay HUD settings, the most important for me is the buff and the debuff bar uh, placed in the position where, where I put them and you can see those active buffs that are in play uh, such as Overload, Scrimshaw, Godbooks, any of the pocket slot item effects prayer etc and as you become more experienced the boss target information becomes increasingly important debuffs on the boss for example or to check where or to check whether debilitate actually hit reducing your damage taken from the boss by 50 percent or whether it's splashed those things become really important when you're in a very high level pvm at the beginning you're not really going to pay attention to it you might not even know what they mean but you'll notice beneath the boss target information if you're using cursors for example it'll show you know the effects being in play if they work at that specific boss if it's non-reflective if it's not reflect immune and things like that and it does help you in, in boss fights as you get to the higher tier uh, pvm situations but I mostly use it for the debilitate aspect of things. Um, but if you are doing Telos as well, if you hover over the uh, beam, for example, which is under the boss target information or on you, that'll tell you exactly what the bar is doing to you. So it, it does help you when you're new to PVM. And if you're a Calfight King and he puts Slaughter on you, just member, you know, that'll show on your buff or debuff bar and you hover over it and it'll tell you the effect of what's on you at that time. So it, it does come in very useful. All right, so I'm now going to do this. Um, I'm now going to look at my Logitech mouse. All right, so we're going to go into my monitor, switch over there, and go to my Logitech mouse. So I have a Logitech G502, 
and this was such an incredible buy. I think it only cost me about sixty-six pounds uh, off Amazon or something, and it looks good, right? I I love the look of this mouse. It was just it looks like a mini transformer or something. Like it's gonna transform into something epic. Um, so I'm really happy with the way it looks. It can change, you know, to different colors. Uh, but the main thing why I bought this is because of these buttons. And I thought it would be a great starter mouse for me personally in terms of a gaming mouse because rather than going out and buying a Razer mouse that has like 12 different buttons on it, I thought this would be a good, you know, way into things and because these two here are the main buttons that you're using and you can just reach those with your thumb. So what I've decided to do eventually, um, I've actually now... You can have three different profiles on this, so if you're playing different games, again, like maybe one for Overwatch, one for, you know, for your FPS shooter games, one for, you know, your MMO game, and etc. So on this one, Profile 2, I have this one here, which is easily accessible with my thumb. Um, I've keybinded this to Shift, so if you actually click into it and you go Edit, you can have a keystroke directly onto it, and I've put Shift on there. So what will happen is, if I then go back to my actual game, you'll notice now I've started to keybind some of my defensives and I put shift and W for example. So if I hold that mouse button whilst pressing W, rather than it doing freedom, it'll do anticipate. And it's just little things like that. Essentially, you can double the amount of um, existing keybinds that you've got just by clicking one button on your mouse. And you can do that with, with control or alt for example. So... I'm potentially thinking as I get more experience to put the other mouse button on alt so then it uh, doubles it again or gives me another gives me access to another load of keybinds there for different abilities but you don't need too many um, and again it you just want to progressively do it even when I first bought this mouse I didn't even have this interface and all I did was actually put these two to I assigned um, I assigned my prayers to these two buttons here so I could press which effectively a Raxor. It made a big difference for me in phase four. And so I could use like a salt and my Zerk rotation quite freely whilst just press switching on point, And it really does help. So anyway, those are the four main buttons here. And you can also use these at the top of the mouse as well, near your left click button. Again, these are fairly difficult from experience to use because you have to use your index finger for them and it's not it doesn't feel natural at all like these are a lot more natural so i tend to try and stray away from using these ones but other than that it's got a fantastic hyper wheel so you can zoom in and out very quickly and you can adjust that as well and of course you can you can adjust your dpi sensitivity levels very easily as well so that essentially means you know how quick your mouse moves on your screen so i have mine set to 3500 at the moment dpi um, and again, you can vary that depending on what game you're playing. I'll lower it down if I play an FPS shooter for increased accuracy. But on an MMO where you you know you're clicking really quickly around different things, you know a high DPI does help a lot. All right, so that essentially is just a bit of background, you know, behind the mouse and how I'm able to, you know, otherwise you'd just be like, well, what does that mean? Shift R and everything. And that, that's essentially the context behind it. So when you see like Shift R there, you know that I'm clicking my mouse button and R at the same time for my special attack weapon for the Guthic stuff here. All right, and I'm going to try and slow it down a little bit now again. Uh, you can get so in-depth with this, and I'm going to try and keep it at a standard where the mass majority of people can understand it and go with it. So if we have a look at the main action bar here, I use this for my main DPS abilities for each style. Um, so like 1 to 5 are my basic abilities, my basic DPS abilities, and then A, S, and D. A and D are my main threshold abilities for each style so on range i think i have like snapshot and rapid fire but like i said never use range anymore i have asphyxiate and wild magic on my on my magic bar and on my melee bar for example my 200 i have hurricane and quake so that's just like a little example there. i think on my dual wield i'll have like destroy there and then i'll have like assault you can use assault there i usually have assault on r as well so i can use that when i'm walking a raxor but anyway um there are like my thresholds. Then I have usually a bleed effect or another basic on S. Again, if you just like put your hand on your keyboard right now over those keys, you can see how easy it is to actually access those keys. And especially like one to five, very easy to actually access those. I usually have my hand placed where I can easily access two, but number four feels the most ideal ability to use and that that helps me because on magic i have that i have that assigned to sonic wave when i'm using my noxious staff and that increases the accuracy of a lot of my abilities and i usually use that before my threshers or before like debilitate um and things like that and it just feels natural and that's what you want to feel you want to feel like this is a natural key binding setup for you 
and it, like I said, A and D, it's a beautiful to assign those to your thresholds in my opinion. And, you know, I used to click those back in the day and, and when I changed it and got into the habit of doing my, uh, and got to the habit of actually clicking A and D for these, it just changed my whole gameplay personally. It really made a difference for me. I then have another basic there, Tusker's Wrath, whenever I want to use it, if I need to, very rarely use it. I then have like Sacrifice here and then a few that I will click. I'll have my ultimate ability always set to T, so on range I've got Death Swiftness, on my Magic Bar I've got Sunshine, on my Melee Bar I've got uh, Meteor Strike at the moment for when I was doing like Invention Training, but usually I'll have Berserk there. And then on E, this will usually be a mechanical or determined by the boss mechanics or environment. So when in Telos, I have that set to resonance because I use that in, I use that very quickly after switching to my shield and you have to get it on the tick in order to get a heal off it. If you're like, you know, going at the speed and you, you're trying to make use of every tick that you have. I will usually, if I'm at Virago, have that to escape because it's nice and easy to get to. Um, at the moment, I have escape set to shift and one. Uh, but when I'm at Virago, I'll swap those two out. So Resonance will be Shift 1 and Preparation will be Shift 2. Again, logical. So as soon as I finish my Resonance, I use Preparation whenever, pretty much soon afterwards in order to recharge the Resonance quicker. It's just things like that. I try and think logical with it in my mind. So it makes sense to me. I have my I have R set to the Special Attack, so Shift R. And then I have Vogue down here set to R as well. And I have this one here is usually always like Surge or Barge. So Surge when I'm doing Telos, Barge when I'm doing Virago. X is always a food. Uh, X is always a type of food. And then with that, I combine it with C over here. And again, I'll go into that now. So in terms of the four additional action bars, the top right one, uh, this is like my miscellaneous one. It's a reactive, proactive ability bar used to counter environment or boss mechanics. So I have like onslaught, um, different abilities that I'll only use occasionally throughout the boss fight so I can click them quite easily. This is actually set to my mouse, those two top buttons near my left click uh, button. So I can use shield on when I'm at Telos in, in emergency situations or to reduce the damage. I have my prayer switches on here as well. Like I said, I used to have these key binding to my mouse. At the moment, I only have soul split key binding to it like that, which is which is from my mouse at the moment. And then I have to click magic back on or melee back on. Eventually, I'm going to think of a smarter way of key binding those. Now, probably one of the most important key binding on this one is my brew, my Saradamin brew here, which I have keybinded to C. So if you go to your keyboard right now and you put your fingers on X and C, you'll notice they're next to each other. So I use that for my Rocktail brew or my food brew combo, uh, which gives you a huge boost in life points, and for example, like that. But of course, the heal would be much larger. And that is a little tip, and most people know that, but if you're starting and new to the game, you won't know that little trick, and you can heal very quickly with that in emergency, in emergency situations. The bottom right bar I use this for my defensive abilities. So if you're gonna, if you're tanking and everything, I like to tank on this game more so than DPS at the moment. Uh, I've been doing a lot of tanking at raids, base tanking. If you're doing Virago, you can do bomb tanking, base tanking again. Um, and there's a few different places, Cowfight King, you'll be bait, but that's more DPS. So there's there's not that many places where you're constantly using defensives, and that's why your main action bar will be DPS orientated for me personally. But I also have all of the the main defensives here. And these are the main ones in my eyes that you need. So I have, I usually rotate between A and D mostly with my defensives, depending on what boss I'm fighting. So with Telos, I'll have Reflect on D and I'll have Revenge on A. So I'll shift A and shift D. Again, just being logical, uh, so it makes sense in my mind. They're associated with the DPS thresholds again. So A and D is always in my mind associated with threshold abilities. I will also get a keybind for Devotion soon as well, or I swap out Revenge and Devotion depending on what boss I'm fighting, because I don't always need to use re Revenge. I only need to use Revenge if I'm fighting a boss that has lots of different minions attacking me at the same time, which is actually going to give me a decent amount of stacks to then deal damage with it. I have Freedom and Anticipate on W. Again, both have similar effects, and so I've keybinded them on the same um keystroke however again i've used my mouse to shift w for anticipate to, to differentiate between the two the other two bars at the moment i rarely use and i'm just thinking of ways in which i can exploit these and take advantage of them um if i came across a boss which i had to use range at more frequently there would be some range abilities that i might not be able to fit on my bar that i want to use so i'd put those in here 
but I do occasionally use this bar, for example, for Soul Link when I need to tap it on. Uh, maybe I need to switch to Fortitude, uh, prayer switching, I'm going to keybind these eventually. And again, I use it for like Tsunami when I'm at Telos, uh, Insight when I'm going to tank. So these are like the main abilities that I will be activating, but not frequent enough to actually keybind yet or frequent enough to have on your main action bar. And again, you don't need to keep on all your abilities either. There are pros out there who don't and just click everything, but it's not just about keybinding here. It's just about having the most relevant abilities on your interface to be more efficient. Um, and my previous interface, it was great because it had everything on there, but I didn't really need at least half of the abilities that were actually on my interface. And therefore, I've just made it a bit tidier. And now I only have the abilities that I actually need to use on a frequent to infrequent basis, but all the obsolete abilities that I never use are now no longer on my interface. And that, that choice is great with this UI and with this option. Of course, I've got a load of Cades there. I'm just filling space because of my mistake, but I'm just filling loads of loads. I'm just filling that up at the moment. And again, it just gives me the option. I've got plenty more. I mean, if you look at that for like Virago, Araxor, um, Telos, and any other boss that I use magic with, they're all the abilities that I use mainly at the moment. There might be a couple that I've missed off. This is a quite a new interface. I've only used it for two days, so I might have missed a couple of a, a couple off. But you know, that's pretty good going in terms of everything that has everything that's offered to you. And I've managed to condense it down to that. And a lot of people do this now, so it's very worth it if you're a new player listening right now. Just, just you might none of this might make sense to you. This is kind of advanced, so. If you're like a player who's been playing a while now, you're a mid to high level PVM -er, and this this should come in useful for you. It just makes your boss fighting much easier and more fluid, especially when you keybind your abilities. It just also allows you to enjoy the content more if you keybind because you'll be able to actually look at the boss and, and the damage that you're dealing or the boss special attacks more often. So rather than like looking to see which ability to click, if you have them keybinded off memory, you'll be able to just use them and still keep your eyes on the boss fight itself. And in my opinion, that really adds to the immersion of the boss fight. Uh, it just takes a lot of practice and time to adjust. And then this is something which I'm still getting my head around. I have decided to put my inventory on a horizontal slant just so it frees up more space here in the bottom right corner of my screen. This is something I'm still getting used to in terms of where I want to place like my runes and my weapons and things. But at the moment, I think, I've, I think it looks all right. I then have my grouping system for when I go raiding and I can see all the people in the raid, teleport, ready up and things like that, which comes in very useful in high level PVM. And that's something which I'm hoping Jax will work on more in the future. And that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about for now. It would have been nice, of course, like now that you know what my interface is like when I'm fighting bosses in the future, if I come out with a video, you know, have a look at the debuff and the buff bar when I'm fighting the boss. And I say that now and I'll probably have like, I probably won't be overloaded or something. There'll be like a million people in the comment section saying, why no overload, mate? So yeah, I've probably just done myself in there, but the the buff and debuff bar, very worthwhile looking at maybe when I produce videos in the future or if I'm streaming, and especially the, the boss target information. That does tell you a lot about what's going on, um, so that can help you out. I've tried to make this video appeal to people who were um, been playing the game a little bit. You know, they've got the basic interface, which is maybe like my last interface video, but they just want to take it up a notch now, make things more efficiently, understand their abilities more. And, you know, this flexibility that comes with multiple action bars really allows you to do that. Uh, but, you know, if a new player comes across this video the first time, it's still probably worthwhile going ahead and doing this and trying to invest time into it. But it will be a lot harder for a brand new player to do this because, you know, a lot of this is subjective. You're going to put abilities on your bar where you want them and you're going to keybind them where you feel they are comfortable. And honestly, that just comes from time, investing time into it and from fighting bosses and finding out, okay, what abilities you want to prioritize at that boss fight and therefore put them on your action bar and keybind them to a keystroke that you're going to be able to access easily. And yeah, it just comes with a lot of practice, but hopefully this has gave you the foundations to go out and try it yourself, invest time into it and find out what works for you. So thank you very much for watching and listening. Make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.